evening. I'm Rob from Workable. Hi. Bit of background on Workable. Uh, many of you won't know who we are. So we're a B2B SaaS company founded the end of 2012. We make recruitment software for small and medium sized companies. So in London, that's a lot of high growth tech companies. Around the world, that's dentists, healthcare companies, trucking companies. It's around 4,000 companies at the moment. It's about 15% month on month growth. We've got one of our kind investors, Dan and Adam, sitting around the back. Um, Bulls and Aisley North and Open Funds, who were the initial investors as well. Uh, so that's some credentials. There's some customers there. There's some money there. Uh, this is how we kind of got to where we are today. So three years growth from my angle. I actually run our sales team, but being a three-year-old company, we've kind of gone from being 10 people with nine developers and a commercial person through to a 60-person company with specific functions. So my roles developed from business development to what some people might call growth hacking, to what some people just call growth, to marketing, to running a sales team. So this is the way I'm kind of approaching it. So what we've aimed to do is create growth engines based on established best practices. So it's not, there's no Dropbox example here. We're not that smart. We haven't grown that fast, but we've used principles that have been used over time. And where we found that they've worked for us, we've doubled down on them and looked to grow that way. This kind of covers some of that. So although I'm in sales now, growth for us really is a company-wide effort. The first growth tactic that we had was great support. When there was three people in the company, 10 people using Workable, they weren't paying at that point, customer support was our marketing. It was someone signs up, they have a great experience with support, that helps them get value from the trial, they would convert, they tell their friends, this was the biggest marketing tactic we had. Google is now the biggest marketing tactic, but this is still super important for us. Word of mouth, referring friends, this is important for us. Engineering, we build growth into the product. So there's ways to expose workable to people who aren't paying for it. Sales, yeah, it kind of comes from it. Again, it's giving that good experience, making sure people have a good experience of workable, marketing, design, operation, product. There's no one in workable isn't responsible for growing the company, and everyone is sort of aware of where their job has that impact. What I'm going to focus more on is sort of growth for acquisition. So this is sort of pre-customer. So trying to get people to fill the funnel. We're a self-service model largely. Although I run the sales team, the sales team touches about 10% of the leads that convert into paying customers. Most other people will be going through a traditional, they come to the website through search or content, sign up for a free trial, which is 15 days, and then they convert at the end of it. The whole company is built around that infrastructure. We're not built around having the HubSpot model of big enterprise sales team like a Salesforce might. The first thing we did, and this is something that most companies can do, was invest in utilitarian content. This is content that we knew people who were likely to use Workable were going to be looking for. In our case, recruitment software, it's people who are hiring. It's trying to get people just in front of that point. So what are people doing when they're about to hire someone that we can try and create content for? So for us, job descriptions was the obvious choice. So before I joined, so the company's about six months old. We had an HR intern whose job was churning out job description content. It's now the biggest driver of traffic that we own through to Workable. We now have eBooks, interview questions, the one thing that we haven't done a lot of work on, which a lot of people will say you should, is the blog. We never really had a fully functioning blog. We didn't have someone who could manage editorial in a strong way. But what we could do was create this type of content that we knew people were looking for. And even before that, you might think if you've started a company, but you're not an expert in that field or you can't create content, there's expertise that you've got as an entrepreneur, as a startup employee that you can create content around. So this, uh, Nikos is our founder and CEO. This was a blog that he put out on Medium about financial planning for SaaS startups. He'd been going out to meet VCs. He'd had to put together a lot of financial planning documents. So he put together a blog about it. A lot of our users are startups. This is still one of the most successful pieces of content that Workable have produced. And it's not even on the Workable website, but obviously you can link through people finding out about Workable. The other thing with content is to recycle that. So getting content and just putting it on your site is not always enough. The SEO will start to have an impact three, six months down the line if it's good content, but you've got to find ways of making it work harder for you straight away. One of the best ways for us is Quora. So last year, Quora drove more customers to Workable than our own content, people coming to it direct. And it's being able to go there, learn about the norms of that, 
community. In this case, with Quora, you can't just go there and be sales, 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 because people just call you out, you get collapsed. You've got to add value there. But this can be a really cheap, it's free, you've got content, make sure it goes out and find people. To put some charts to that, so it's not all just, hey, this might have worked for us. This is our content traffic to the job description site. The yellow line is the trend in terms of the top. The bit to the top of the right is one core question, which sort of roughly added 50% of traffic to that one particular job description. Likewise here, this is interview questions. This was the next evolution from job descriptions. Once someone's looked for job descriptions, they're interviewing someone, what are they looking for next? How do I interview a technical person when I'm not technical? So basically from the left, this is SEO starting to kick in. It's taking a few months. November, the big spike is just finding one question on Quora that 10,000 people were following about machine learning. Post the question, post the link, and that's the bump that goes up from there. And again, that one week produced more customers from Quora than the rest of those three months. Recently, we've hired a director of SEO, so we have that in-house expertise. Before that, we didn't. We were writing content with sort of SEO basics. Like we knew roughly the keywords. We had no idea around link building. But the one thing we knew we could do was piggyback on other people's ad spend. These are applicant tracking system is the most common search term for us. It's also a very expensive one. As a SMB player in quite an enterprise space, people are willing to pay a lot of money for that search term that we can't handle from a customer acquisition cost point of view. But what we can do is piggyback on software advice. It's a software recommendation site, which when you search applicant tracking system, third result, if you go to software advice, go to applicant tracking systems, the most reviewed one is workable, and this is stuff that we could do for free. We had customers, we just created brand ambassadors who were happy to go and leave reviews on that site. This was a very quick win. We're still working to get onto page one for SEO, but we were on page one for software advice in about six months. One other thing, and this can be some people like it, some people don't, is social sales is kind of the, the buzzword for it. It's worked for us really well. It doesn't scale. We're never going to become a billion dollar company because we find a lot of people on Twitter looking to hire people. But particularly when we were small, if you can automate this and make it work, it's a quick win. There's people out there who are specifically saying, I want your product. And most of your competitors, particularly if they're large, aren't looking for those people. So we use a tool called Mention, put in the search terms, your company name, your competitor's name, so people are going, eh, I'm using this tool, but it's really not working for us. OK, great, do you want to try Workable? It's like Google Alerts, but on steroids. It's about $19 a month, and you can set it all up. It automates it. So although it doesn't scale, you can spend very little time and get leads from that. And we've got a number of customers from that. It's probably like one a week that we get from it. So it's nothing compared to like Google AdWords spend, but it's still worthwhile. One other thing we did. When I started, so when I started, there was nine people in Athens and one person in London, that was me. My job was to create a density of customers here, see if we can sell this to people when we actually go out and put feet on the ground. One of the cheapest ways we could do that was with events. So between myself and a couple of other people who had an interest in this space, we put together a series called Talent Hackers, forgive the name, but we got together around here about 190 people to our first event. It cost about 100 quid and they were all our target market. It was in-house recruiters at tech SMB companies in London. We ended up running those in London, Philadelphia, New York, Boston, and they each cost around 100 quid an event. We ended up with someone in New York who just ran these in the US, but it was a great lead source for us, and in terms of brand awareness for a company that was at the time about 20 people, it was invaluable. Willem went to the first of these events in New York where I met him, we still know him now, He's still a very good brand ambassador for us. And actually, this question here is a question from Quora. So it was someone on Quora asking, what's the best recruiting software for small and medium-sized companies? Willem came in, left an answer. This Quora answer has got us more customers than any of the ones that I've posted, and I've posted about 50. But this one is the one that drives the most. So investing in those brand ambassadors really can help, and it doesn't have to be hugely time or money intensive. The next part of what we have done historically, and we focused a lot on this last year, is building growth into the product. So this isn't new, it's not fancy, it's the Powered by X idea. This is one of our customers, so CityMapper. This is one of their job descriptions that they've used via Workable. And in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see it's Powered by Workable. It's 
if you've got the opportunity to put this in, it's, a, it's an easy win. There's other things that we've done, so with recruitment software and the idea of exposing your product to people who aren't actually paying for it, external recruiters, so recruitment agencies, building a feature that lets our customers show workable to people outside their accounts. Likewise, just getting people in the company involved, allowing there to be a very easy way for colleagues to get their <coughs> company colleagues on board. And email. A lot of people miss this, it's really easy to do. Tools like Intercom that we've been using since we started, very easy if you've got that free trial, if there's a touch point, if you've got the email just to automate that process, it's priceless. And it's one of those things that you set it up once and it just keeps on working. You don't have to do anything more, you might want to tweak it. We're playing around with them now that we've got someone who specifically looks at that part of the funnel, so from signing up from the trial to converting. But really, we did this from day one and it was priceless. Going back to software advice, this is Trustpilot. It's around that brand ambassador's point of view and the fact that support are probably our biggest growth tactic. If people enjoy using their product, when you get that kind of wow moment with them, which for us is either perhaps they've had a great experience with support, the first time they receive a candidate through Workable, is asking them to leave a review. These people are generally happy to do it. You can't milk it. Don't ask for things after things after things. But if you can do that, again, piggyback on other people's ad spend and SEO and have that social proof. We not doing enterprise sales, we're averse to having to go out and reach out to get references on individual basis. But we have about 100 reviews online that people can check. They see, ah, okay, this looks similar company to me. It's a really quick win for us. And with Trustpilot, it's the classic case that now when people search for workable, they see the star rating that comes up. And you need, it's about 30 or 40 reviews on Trustpilot to get that. And in terms of credibility, it can really help. This is just another example of one of the emails we send. So social proof, again, this isn't new or fancy, but it is a relatively quick win. It's getting those customer testimonials onto your website and getting those logos onto your website. I won't spend too much time on this. It's not new, but we did spend that additional time in Vision, who are still on there. Um, I don't know if anyone uses them, but it's a design product. They were one of our earliest customers when we had about 30, and it was like a party for celebrating one customer. We celebrated more for that than we did sort of raising funding. <coughs> Um, but we knew we could put them on the website, and from my side, from the sales team's point of view, ah, who uses Workable? Okay, City Mapper, us two in Vision. It's a nice line to be able to pull out. So if anyone's got a self-service SaaS business, friction is the killer, absolute killer. So keeping things simple is important. This is our sign-up form. It's one page, it's four entries, and then you're ready to go. We have an even more basic version. Type the job title that you're looking for, where you're looking to do it. Next, it will create an account. This only came about six months ago, but it's seen about 25% increase in conversion rate than the previous sign-up form. And these we can use everywhere. So on the content I mentioned around interview questions, job descriptions, we can place this throughout the marketing site and draw people in from there. So that is a very quick, and I'm sorry, I'm aware I'm talking quite quickly, overview of what we've done. In terms of what's next, there's a couple of things that actually a lot of people would suggest you should do sooner. And I'm not suggesting the fact we've done them a bit later it means we've been right. A lot of smarter people have done them sooner. But things like net promoter score, ours isn't naught, I should point out. It's that we only turned it on about two hours ago. Um, I promise, I, I think it's around about 90 now with three replies. Um, but it's gonna provide us with that metric and that quantifiable data. So I'm not suggesting that this is something you need to do from day one. I guess the context of this is just because Airbnb had a refer and friends and Dropbox had a refer a friend and it absolutely blew them up, that that's right for you. For us, this is something that maybe will come in a couple of months time. We're three months in, 4,000 customers, but this wasn't the right place to spend development time and development effort when we were six months old. So that's just to provide a little bit of context. So this is basically what we run by the best growth strategy, particularly if you're in self-service, is a great product. Make it so good that people want to use it, pay for it, and tell people about it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so what made, you, what made you make the decision to go from organic sales model versus direct sales? It was, so it wasn't a decision I made, it was one the founders made before the company started. Um, so Spiros and Nikos, who were the CTO and CEO, they'd worked together in a very sales-driven environment. Um, they wanted to go and work for a company that was much more technology-driven, rather than the sales team being able to say, hey, we need to build this, we have to build this, and then the tech people going, okay, we'll do that, that's fine. Um, 
so that's really the reason and that is part of the reason for going into the SMB market to have a self-service technology driven company and so that's what we're always driven so in terms of headcount that still exists of around about the 60 employees around about 40 to 45 of those are developers my team in sales is four so we've kept that model very light touch sales um, so it's really just about the founders decision to want to be in a tech driven company um, okay so the 15 day trial um, it's always been 15 days from day one except what did change quite early on was we had, we had a free plan. So the plan in work where you can have one active job, so you're hiring for one personal time, used to be free, that was panned. Rather than go into it in a lot of detail, I'll share the link, Nikos wrote a lovely piece around why we dumped that. 15 days is long enough for someone to come into Workable and identify if there's value. They come in on day one, within day two they've posted a job, they've started receiving candidates and started communicating with them. So within that 15 day period, they should have evaluated whether there's value there. So- Is that working days or calendar days? It's calendar days. Um, so yeah, sign up on a Friday, but it's, it's that. If you've got, if it takes 30 days to find value in your product, <coughs> that's probably how long your 30 day trial needs to be. Ours is relatively short before you get that value, so that's why it's 15 days. Uh, uh, yeah, you head up sales in a base in the UK, but sales and marketing HQ is in Boston. How does that work and will it change in the future? Um, yes. <laughs> what's the first question? Oh, the first question is a statement. Um, yes, the reason we have Boston versus London is that I joined in London um, when we were very young. So it was actually someone at Notion who'd made the connection between me and Nikos. Um, I happened to be in London. It was a sort of metropolitan city where we could create a base. Uh, when the decision came, 60% of our customers in the US. It's basically been like that since day one and it's carried on. So we wanted to be closer to them. Um, how does that work and will it change in the future? There are challenges with that. Um, even if I was in Boston, my team is spread out over West Coast, East Coast, London, Athens. So there is no one center but as we grow, the density will be built around the Boston office. Um, will it change? Probably. Um, my role will probably go to, to Boston and we'll build a small team here. Um, but yeah, there's, with remote working, there's challenges. If the whole company isn't remote working, so the infrastructure isn't set up for that, um, using Hangouts and Skype and Slack isn't everybody's dream work solution. But there's tools now that make it possible. So it's never been a sort of particular obstacle to getting things done. Do we want to go down to one more or is that? Yeah, let's do one more. Uh, what's your view on free forever with limited features versus full features? Um, okay, so feature limiting and offering something free. I'm not a big fan of it because I don't like the fact that the free people tend to get a crap product. Um, that's the shortest answer. Um, if you can give them something that's high quality and free, then fine. Um, but generally speaking, and this is my experience more of using free products is that you just don't get a very good product. So why do you want to expose a lot of people to that? Um, but again, the blog post that Nikos wrote, which covers a couple of these questions, goes into that in a lot more detail. So I'll share that if we can after the event. Okay, thanks Rob. Thank you. Thanks.